Hey everyone, this is Justin Pate from the Rap Institute and welcome to another round of the Never Stop Learning Online Rap Contest. So what I love about this contest is, it's like a mini workshop. I'm gonna rap something live, real time, and give commentary, so you're gonna pick up some good tips and tricks. And if you guess how long it took me to wrap that object, you win the prize from the sponsor of the round. And the sponsor of this round is and Nezotech. And Nezotech is really well known for their color change film and they have an amazing gloss finish that looks exactly like paint. Great stuff. So if you guess how long it takes me to wrap this door of a Porsche, you're going to win a free roll of film from a Nezotech plus you're going to win this nice mat and you're going to win four wheel wheel covers. And the value of this prize is around $1,000. Awesome stuff. So with that being said, let's just dive right into it. So before I start the clock, we're going to talk about prep because everything we do on the Rap Institute is broken up into three sections. Prep, install, post. And you can't have a great install and you can't have a great finish if you don't do the prep right. So what was the prep on this door? Obviously cleaned it, clay barred it, got it nice and smooth. Then, okay, this is a color change wrap and it's color red, which is if you've done any kind of color change wraps, you know that red is not an easy color to change into black, especially on a Porsche, especially one this beautiful and this kind of classic. That being said, this edge was super thick. So what we did beforehand is we did an inlay of black, nice and deep inside there, so we got coverage. So then when we wrapped the door, put knifeless tape here and actually putting on the fender side. So when I cut the excess material, it's gonna fold inside and the edge is gonna face in. So it's gonna give it that paint-like finish. Took the hardware off during the prep phase earlier when we were cleaning, took this molding out and then put knifeless tape here because I don't want to cut directly on the body, but not actually taking the material all the way to here. And the reason why is when they go to take the wrap off, let's say in two or three years, now we don't have to take the hardware off because we're just taking the material just enough under to get that coverage, but not too far under where we have to take the hardware off again. Good tip. Now we get to here and because the client doesn't want to see red, wrap this black yesterday. And now we're gonna take the material around this edge just enough so that overlap faces this way so the client doesn't see it and far enough that the client doesn't pick up an edge. So it ran knifeless tape here because you never wanna cut directly on the body, especially on a beauty like this. So that's the prep phase in terms of getting the cutting sequence, everything good, cleaning stood good, the hardware is taken off. Now got the tools ready. In this case, got the magnets, have masking taped up here so no dirt comes out. Got my squeegee, got my knife, got my cutter. Cars on race ramps, so it's a nice, good height, so it's very comfortable to work in. Got my heat gun set up and got the material, and I think I'm ready to rock and roll. So, that being said, I'm gonna start the clock. So, if you guessed how long it took me to wrap uh, this car yesterday on Instagram, well, you have a chance to win the prize. So, the clock is going. So, let's get to it. So the first step, now that we're to the install phase, now that we're out of the prep phase, is for me, with color change especially, I always like to take a tack cloth and just go over the entire door. And this only takes a few seconds. And this is a nice tack cloth from Yellow Tools. It's not super waxy, but it works really, really well. And I just go over the outside area as well, because I'm just trying to eliminate any specks of dirt from getting under. Now that I have that set, I'm gonna grab the roll of film. Now notice that this panel is rolled really loose. And that's something you should really know about in Nezotech is don't wanna roll it tight. Because if you roll it tight, the film may actually separate from the liner. Definitely don't wanna do that. And the reason for that is because this has a PET liner on it. And the PET liner really helps with the gloss finish. And a good tip for that is what happens with the PT liner is helps with the gloss finish, but it creates a really big electrostatic charge when you go to pull the backing paper. You can already see some of the dust picking up here. So this comes from the printer right now, and this actually helps keep the electrostatic down. So this works really good for printers, but also works really good for color change. So once I get it to here, pull the backing paper low and flat. And once that's off, now always a good tip is to put the liner directly underneath the car so you don't step on it. Magnets go up here. I can take this little bad boy, put it away, put it back on the printer for later. So now, no dust. I pulled the liner underneath the material so nothing gets underneath the adhesive. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. The material has wrinkles. How do you get the wrinkles away is by setting it up properly. So I'm gonna pick it up here, squeegee on the sucker, make it nice and loose, let it relax. And I always like to start on what's called the 50-50 spot. In this case, it's the body line, kind of at this point, where I feel like it's gonna have nice, even tension, top to bottom. Pick it up to here, let it just sit, and now I squeegee. What's particularly nice about an Ezotech is they have a low initial tack. So that means that I can pick the material up, reposition it, and then squeegee it. So this allows me to work by myself with very little stress, which is nice. 
So now I'm just going to squeegee back and forth. Nice, even squeegee strokes. I got a medium to hard squeegee, kind of on the softer side actually. And I like soft squeegees because, you know, they kind of conform, especially when you got a curve like this. Now, pick the material back up and squeegee again. Now I mentioned earlier with the Nezotec, they have that really amazing gloss finish. So you always want to make sure you have a nice buffer on your squeegee. But even then, you know, I'm not trying to press too hard, you might get some scratches. What can you do? So if I'm squeegeeing and I get scratches on the material from my squeegee, and if the client says something about it, I just tell the client, you know what, scratches just are a part of life, just have to deal with it, okay? I'm joking, of course. Now, right now, you can see here, this is actually a good image, where the gloss is a little different right now. We wrapped this yesterday, and this panel looks a little different, okay? But this panel is actually the same material that came off the roll. Why it looks different right now is what Anesotech also does is they have a cap sheet. So they have a PET liner on the back side, and that helps with the gloss. And now here they have this cap sheet. I'm gonna take it off right to there. And now I can take the cap sheet off. So when I was squeegeeing here, I was getting scratches, but it doesn't matter because I got the cap sheet. So this is the great thing about Anesotech. See? Now the cap sheet comes off and watch what I do. I'm putting the cap sheet in here. So really important and Rapid Stew is really passionate about it is green equals green. So we're really uh, pushing recycling the material. So don't mix and match your material. Just don't throw everything in one bin. This is for recycling. Vinyl goes in here and then the liner can get recycled as well. So a good tip for that. So now liner's off, ready to rock and roll. So squeegee as far as you can with the liner on, or the cap sheet on. And now I'm gonna take the material just to the edge here and take it to the knifeless tape. Cool. So you can see that you can actually take the material quite far without having to use heat, without having to, with, while keeping the cap sheet on. And now I'm ready to start relaxing the material. So here we go. So I'm gonna take the heat gun right now and I'm just gonna relax it on the edge. Now, one thing you have to note about an Ezotech is that it conforms nice and easy. You see that it's kind of relaxing. So as soon as I heat it, it starts to shift. It starts to kind of breathe and it kind of fits right onto the car. So if I go up now, now that I heated it right there, it looks how smooth that looks. And that tells me that's good. If it has no wrinkles on the edge, it's what I call glass, that means it's, you're good to go. So I go down here and I see some wrinkles. Watch what I do. I'm gonna take the heat gun again. And you can see Marcos probably in the camera. And this is how glossy it is. It looks like I'm wrapping a black mirror right now. And by kissing it with heat, you see the material relaxes, and then I just run my finger and it gets nice and smooth. So you always wanna go for that finish. And why the materials, I didn't stretch the material, but why it's shrinking so much right now is that is, and I'll explain it as soon as the heat gun goes off. I'm gonna take the material, I'm gonna relax it before I go around the edge. Cool, nice and smooth, rock and roll. This material is actually a unique combination. It's the only one that I know of in the wrap industry where generally there's two types of film that you're gonna be wrapping with today. You probably heard, if you're a wrapper, you already know this, but if you've never wrapped before, it's good to know, is there's a what's called calendar film and then there's cast film. Calendar film starts off as a solid and it gets stretched out into a giant sheet. But cast film starts off as a liquid and so it's much more flexible than calendar film. So most films, you know, are calendar or cast. Calendar film is generally for walls. Cast film is often for cars and vehicles and for stretching. But what's unique about Inesotech is they're the only film on the market that I know of where it's both cast and calendar. So one layer is calendar, one layer is cast. And I'm sure they do that for getting that super high gloss. Now I'm gonna pull the material away the knife will tape and tuck it in. Now let's get back to the point of what I was talking about in terms of calendar and cast is, when I was relaxing the film right there on the edge, if you noticed, it really shrank back. And the reason why it shrank back a lot is because of that calendar aspect. Because calendar film is naturally stretched on its own, if you hit it with heat, it shrinks. And some people think that's bad, but I actually think that's good. Because the reason why is, on those sections that I just showed you is, because the material relaxed on those edges, it took the tension away and actually kind of shrank and conformed there and it got nice and smooth, especially right there on that section. So I'm gonna give it a kiss of heat. I'm gonna round it, tuck it in right there and 
Cool. So now, because I relaxed it ahead of time, no wrinkles, go to the flat section here. Awesome. Give it a kiss of heat, feed it in down here. And again, you can see by having that inlay in ahead of time, now we got that full coverage on the backside here. Looks really yummy right here. And go up all the way to the top here. Looks really good. And now we've got that backside here, got that full coverage. Client's gonna be super happy. They don't see any red. There's no tension, rock and roll. Now we come to this top section here. I set the knifeless tape up here earlier. Gonna pick it up right to here. And again, always try to avoid cutting directly on the car if you can. And a lot of professional installers know this, but again, if you're a beginner and you're watching videos, let's say on the Rap Institute, and you see people cutting directly on the car, they can if you're a professional, but you should always try to avoid it, even on spots where you think the client's not gonna see. So right now, here, just point it all the way across here, right to the edge, cut it right away to here. Awesome. Pull this away and finishing it right to here. Cool. So once this is down, and again, I put masking tape right here just so no dirt sneaks under. I can seal it right on the top there and good to go. And the molding is just gonna sit right on the top there nice and clean, so no cutting in the car. So peace of mind for me. Now that this is set, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut the bottom. Now notice on the bottom here, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna cut it flush straight. So this is what I call an empty cut. So there's no need, me, no need for me to wrap around the bottom right here because the client's never gonna see this. So I can save a little bit of time right there by cutting straight to the edge. And when I get to here now, I'm just gonna cut this excess film away right here. Bam. And notice that all my material is going straight into the trap. Your workspace reflects your wrap. And if you have a clean workspace, well, that means your wrap is going to look nice and tight. Now to here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the door, pop this open, got that low initial tack, open it one more time here. Cool. And now I'm going to wrap it on the inside. Take the material high squeeze it down. And now I got a lot of material here. And again, a good tip if you're a beginner is to kind of just take this material back a little bit so it makes it easier to play. So now this just makes me a little more focused on what I'm doing. And again, this immediately goes into the trash. I'll open the door here. And now my goal is to wrap the material just to this side without wrinkles. So I get the material just to here. That's right under the top section here. Come back and clean that up in a second. Now I'm gonna heat the material. And again, just to relax it. I've already relaxed it once, but you can see by giving it a kiss of heat now, it softens and it kind of already conforms and kind of sits right into this area here. So now I can start to bring the material right around the edge here and feed it into this gap. Because again, my goal is so that it wraps around just around this edge here that I want to get, cover all red. So when the client opens the door, it looks nice and black. But I also want to avoid any tension. And this is the trickiest bit of the whole door. So once I relax that now, all right, I'm going to take my glove and start to form the material right around to that edge now. So by taking my glove now, this one is a really cool one that has nice good fabric inside and it slides and glides, which is great. Come back to here. And you can see the material is almost like shrinking inside there. And that's exactly what I want. I want it to shrink just inside there. And then I can form it on right to the knife tape. And I'm trying to get to this point without any wrinkles, any tension. And this is a notoriously difficult spot. So I'm getting it right to here. But you can see the super high gloss of this material, which is amazing. Give it a kiss of heat. And then here I'm going to just, just take it right to the edge of the knife tape. And again, trying to get that balance between not overstretching, but stretching, getting to the point where it's nice and clean. And again, I'm actually taking advantage of the fact that the door, when I push here, kind of stops. So I can put a little force on it, run my finger, make sure it's nice and smooth. Feels good here. Double check to here, this feels good. So once that's down, I can pull the knifeless tape. Awesome. So I got this nice, good overlap on the inside. It's facing in, pull the knifeless tape out and Bam, super cool. Run my finger, seal the deal, and rock and roll. So now this side's done. There's no way the client's gonna pick up an edge. So with this set now, I'm gonna shut the door, 
And I'm gonna focus on the door cup. This is one of my favorite parts. I love to wrap the door cup. And the reason why is, is I get to start pushing the material and just kind of makes me feel like a little kid. So what's important about this particular one is this one has like really deep recessed areas right here. So you can see I'm gonna give it a kiss of heat and I'm actually gonna feed, and this is what I call feeding the mouth. I'm actually gonna feed the recessed areas first. Give it a kiss of heat and form it in there nice and tight so it doesn't jump out. And I really push it in. And you can see how conformable, even though this is a half calendar, half cast film, it conforms really well for that. So here I'm gonna give it just enough heat to create that glass. And again, you can see that this glove slides and glides. I'm gonna stick my thumb in there and try to do it as close to one time as possible. Once I do that, I can kind of go back and forth and even out the adhesive. Very important to do that very quickly. And that actually avoids any type of adhesive lines. So very important if you're an installer, take it in here, run your finger in there a few times, get the adhesive lines out, give it a kiss of heat. Now I'm gonna heat it one more time. And again, I'm gonna feed the little recessed area right on the side. So I turn my finger right inside there. Same thing here, I turn my finger, so it's like the tip of my finger. And I feed that recessed area first, get it down nice and smooth, then take it right to the edge. Awesome. Now what I like to do personally, is once I take it into these recessed areas, I give it a, quite a bit of heat. And if I give it quite a bit of heat, it lets that adhesive really settle. And I'm actually gonna hold off on cutting this till a little later, so that I'm not gonna take that off the clock. But once I get this set, give it lots of heat. And what I like to do now is watch. I'm gonna go over all the edges, double check for heat. And again, this is about finishing strong. Obviously, I'm gonna come back and cut these out in a little bit. Come back here and I'm double checking to make sure everything's down. Do a 360. And then I like to go over the main area. And normally I'd go over the main area to get scratches away, but in this case, I don't have to because I have that cap sheet, so I can skip that. So that cap sheet actually gives me the high gloss finish and keeps me from having to go back and fix scratches, which is great. And then before I go into the next paddle, I'm gonna take this. This is an aftercare product, and this is gonna help kind of clean off any dirt and handprints on it. So I'm gonna flip this over, spray it, cool. And I'm just gonna quickly wipe over it just so it looks really yummy. So I always like to finish each panel strong. And this is a little bit of the post process right now. And I come back over here and I think it's nice and shiny and good. That's pretty impressive right there. Super deep, gloss black. And again, this is a new color from Inezotech, super awesome. And with that, I think we're done. So let's get to the clock and your prize. 14 minutes and 36 seconds to do a red door of a Porsche to, and change it into gloss black with Inezotech. Super awesome stuff. So I hope you picked up a lot of tips and tricks in terms of getting good prep pulling a liner without getting that electrostatic energy, knowing how to squeegee, how to read the film, how to utilize the cap sheet for your benefit, and you transform a beautiful car like this into gloss black, which is super special. So again, this car, beautiful color, all that kind of stuff, but you know, it's an older car. Now it looks brand new, which is amazing, and that's the power of color change. So big thank you to Nezotech for sponsoring this round. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you win the prize. Thanks for watching. Joseph Pate.